Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about D-tubes. So let's get on with it. Some of the basic things that I'd like to uh, show you about uh, the D-tube as it stands right now uh, this is uh, about six pound per cubic foot uh, Arax foam. Uh, this was shaped to the leading edge using a heat gun. It is heat formable. It was, I found out it was pretty easy to do. First time I ever did it, I just worked. I, I laid up all of the foam, glued it together flat, and then I used my heat gun to shape it to the leading edge. It worked out pretty good. Uh, it was pretty easy to use. It, it, you put a little bit of, you tape one side down, you put a little bit of pressure on the sheet, and you work along with the heat gun, and you just push it down, you get it nice and warm, and you go like this with your hands, with gloves on, and, and clamp it down, and you just work by sections as you go out. It comes out pretty good. It's very happy with that. That's one of the advantages of using a PVC foam. Out at the tip, I'm using like three pound uh, per cubic foot Eric's foam out there. Uh, we have uh, the balsa trailing edge here, which go watch some of the other videos. Uh, you hear in uh, the material and structural trades, uh, you'll find out why I put this balsa in here, why I'm experimenting with it. I'm actually going to build the two sides different. There's going to be one side has balsa, one side doesn't have balsa, and we'll see if there's any differences uh, over time uh, through usage of the aircraft. And uh, so in this particular one, this has the balsa on it. You'll see that uh, the epoxy has uh, oozed through the seam. This balsa is attached on here. It's just tacked on with CA glue before the molding process. Then the epoxy from the carbon fiber on the inside comes through and glues it all together, glues that whole seam. There's a little bit of roughness here where there were wrinkles in the bag, uh, vacuum bag. It would be very easy to come back with a little sanding bar. I'll smooth that out. Here are the seams in the foam. I, I found this uh, uh, recommended online. This is a... A lovely glue. I guess it's called Yoohoo or something like that. Uh, I bought this on Amazon. You can also get it at Michael's uh, craft stores. Uh, this is very handy for gluing foam because it is compatible with polystyrene. Uh, this is PVC. There is, you can use almost any glue on it. But uh, if you have uh, some white bead foam or something like that, this is great. Bonds it together stronger than the foam and it doesn't eat through the foam. So I used this to uh, do these seaming joints here and let it dry for a couple of days. It's sort of like contact cement. It's a little bit flexible, but it holds the sheets together really well. So it holds the sheets together well enough uh, to get it formed onto the mold. Now, when I did the molding, I had uh, painter's tape on here, uh, the Frogger stuff, the green, expensive green stuff, and that was to help hold the seam together while it got vacuum bagged, and then when it was done, I just peeled it off. Once again, the resin from the carbon fiber cloth on the inside came through the seam, and the seam is now all glued together. However, I did find that the tape buckled a little bit when the vacuum bag compressed this all together and pulled that seam together really tight. There were some minor buckles at uh, various spots, and then when the epoxy oozed through, well, there's a high point of epoxy there, so before I do the outer layer, I'm going to have to go back and do a little bit of hand work and uh, smooth that down. So those are just some of the issues of laying up this giant D-tube like this. Now, uh, let me see, what can I show you here? Uh, the cloth that's on the inside. So, a couple of special things here to discuss with the cloth that's on the inside. At the root end, I'm using standard 5.6 ounce uh, basket weave uh, carbon fiber, and it's laid up on the bias, and that runs out to about here, and then it switches over to the spread till carbon fiber, because this stuff's really strong, for a given weight. And you can give it, get the spread toe stuff in a wide variety of um, densities per square yard uh, or weight per square yard. This stuff here is about three ounce. This stuff here is uh, 1.9 ounce. This is the no name brand. Uh, you can tell it's got narrower spread toe. And this is the brand name Textream uh, stuff. And the other difference between the two is uh, this has no sizing on it. You can actually move uh, the, the spread toes around, and that is both uh, good and bad. Um, the text stream has a sizing on it, and this sizing eventually softens up and allows the epoxy to penetrate through, but it prevents these, uh, these spread toes from lumping up or moving around. Now, 
this stuff was very easy to use laying it on to the uh, mold. This stuff was not. <laughs> a little more challenging. Uh, so you say, well, why'd you use this stuff, for all? Why don't you just use the text stream? Well, this is half the cost. Uh, and if you're using a lot of cloth, oh, that's a lot of money. Uh, like $80 a yard compared to uh, $35 a yard. It's a big deal. One of the biggest problems that we had, if you ever buy this stuff, um, you know, if you're on a budget but you want the spread toe stuff and you buy this, uh, one thing that we found is that the, the spread toes have a tendency to, uh, oh, I should hold this up a little higher, have a tendency to crimp together like this. And these corners open up here. And they lump together. And if you try to fix it with your hand, oh, it's a lost cause. You're just going to make it messier. And we had a lot of spots like that where the stuff was just moving around. I was like, oh, in big trouble. I'm going to lose another D-tube. But then... I says, I, I'm just going to start rollering out some of the air pockets with the epoxy roller, the thinned metal epoxy roller. And as I did that, it was like magic. You roll it across the fiber like this. We're working with the toes like this. Of course, we're laid up on the bias on the inside. So I started working it like this and like this. And this handy-dandy tool caused these spread toes to just spread right back out again perfectly, just like the, you see them right here. Uh, and we were very quick and easy, just a little bit of work. And the harder you press, the quicker it spreads it out. So if you've got a really bad spot, you just hit it like this, and it spreads it back out, and problem solved. So uh, it ended up being uh, fairly easy to use, uh, really strong, lightweight, um, probably uses extra epoxy, though, because we, we did have to have enough extra epoxy on this to make sure that it's the foam gets well bonded to it and uh, probably be better off with just plain weave which is what i plan on doing on the left wing this is a standard basket weave uh, 1k toe a four ounce carbon fiber cloth and i'll be using that on the left wing uh, this will end up on this wing it's uh, 5.6 ounce three ounce and then 1.9 ounce out at the tip so I'll start using this at this location. We'll just run four ounce all the way out to the tip. It will cause it to be, oh, maybe six ounces heavier, something like that. It won't be too bad. Um, although this cloth is very expensive too. This is right up there with the TechStream stuff. Um, I think I paid uh, 70 bucks a yard for this stuff. But it's really nice to work with. And let me tell you, when we did the 5.6 ounce at the root with the basket weave, that just went so fast. We just squeegeed it out, rollered it out on there. Zip, zip, we were done. Uh, and no futzing around with the spread toe stuff. So um, if you need those little tricks, uh, you, I just recommend sticking with the basket weave if you have to. If you had uh, regular molds or you're doing this a different way, might be just fine using the text stream and uh, uh, you've got enough time to diddle with it in the mold. So um, all of that said, uh, I thought I'd have a little side discussion about why am I doing it this way. Uh, my buddy Bob that helps me out with this, he says, Raul, if you, you have this design criteria on here that's just really driving the whole thing, and that's that somebody can build this at home with common hand tools. And I says, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's a huge goal. It's next to an impossible goal. Uh, and right now it looks like a home builder doing this. <sighs> Bob and I have a lot of experience with composites, and we struggled and struggled and struggled for four hours just to get to this point. Um, and we had it all planned out. It was hard. It was really, really hard. I can't imagine an average home builder doing this. And then you got to find the big foam block, you got a hot wire, you got to try to get the pieces lined up. And Bob and I have been talking about how would a home builder make a mold inexpensively, which is the point behind this. Because, and, and I've had plenty of people write in and say, Raul, I'd rather just buy the D-tubes already done, please. Uh, make some for me. Uh, and I tell them, you know, are, are you going to pay $5,000, $6,000 for a pair of these? Because that's what they're going to cost. Because by the time uh, somebody makes the, makes the mold for these and then makes them, well, there's five six hundred dollars worth of material here, and uh, then you have the labor. Maybe one person can make a set in a day, and you're fully loaded overhead on that's 150 an hour. 
So you can multiply that out, add that to the cost on each side. Then you've got to double or triple the price so that you're covering, uh, so that you actually make a profit instead of just break even. Uh, and then you have to amortize the cost of the molds. And the molds are professional molds, uh, autoclave with prepreg, which is how this stuff should be made. You put prepreg in a mold, put the foam in, put more prepreg in, vacuum bag it into the autoclave, it goes, and you have beautiful parts. But those molds, tens of thousands of dollars, and you have to amortize that cost. So you're going to be paying $5,000 for a pair of these. You can go out and get a really nice flex wing for $5,000. Uh, and, and that's what really limits the ability to sell more of this type of hang glider, is, is that incredible cost. You go look at a Swift. You're, you're fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 into it by the time you get trailer and instruments and everything else. And, and that's as much as a regular sailplane, regular German production sailplane uh, for your ultralight foot-launchable aircraft. And uh, uh, go get the Aerioptrix. Uh, that's seventy-five dollars or $80,000. Go ahead, put the electric uh, launch unit on it. Now you're looking at $100,000. So massively expensive. Why? Well, they only build two or three at a time. And you put in an order, and then you sit on your hands and wait for two years while you get through the production loop uh, to get your glider. Uh, so really, they, they make a few dozen of these things. You're looking at the total customer base in the whole world might be 50 people uh, that could actually rationalize their way to spending that much money to get an aircraft like this. So I've put this criteria on this aircraft to uh, try to reach a larger audience. Because if you built this at home, then it's going to cost you somewhere between ten and $15,000. And if I can give you 50% more performance, well, you might be willing to spend that kind of money. Uh, now, you're going to have to spend a couple of years building it. If you're slow, you might be able to do it, uh, well, in a year if you're fast. But we've run into a problem here in making the D-tubes. Uh, and it's a straight-up problem issue. How do you create a mold that's 18 and a half feet long, that's dead nuts straight, at home. Um, Bob has some ideas how we could do some uh, laser or water jet cut parts, kind of like a model airplane kit, for the mold, where you'd actually buy a mold kit and then build your mold first. Uh, what it would be lined with, we're still debating that. That's one option. Um, not exactly sure where else we would go. You could make the D-tubes in three sections and then bond them together after the fact. That would be pretty straightforward and easy to do, but it's going to be considerably heavier. You're going to have to use heavier cloth overall and then the relatively heavy. It might add um, a 10 pounds to the aircraft. So trying to stay away from that answer also. So as I work along here, I might get an idea how to actually do this, but that was part of the project is can you design methods for a home builder to do this uh, successfully and build what is essentially a factory quality composite aircraft in his own garage uh, with average skills and average hand tools. And so far the answer is 90% uh, yes. But we got a little 10% problem here with the D-tubes trying to figure out how to get this uh, so that the average home builder can do it. Hey, I'm glad you stuck with till the end of the video. Uh, as I've been yammering on here, you're probably wondering, wow! Where can I get a cool hat like that? I'm sure that's the only thing you were thinking about was that I, I got to have one of those hats, Raul. They're so cool. Well, I had these made up. They're finely embroidered in the lovely state of Wisconsin. Uh, and uh, I think they look pretty nice. And if you'd like to have one of these hats, you go to the link that's down in the description, the PayPal link, and you uh, uh, shoot up 20 bucks to me to my email address, which is also done in the description. It's rawkling at gmail.com. So you hit me up with 20 bucks on PayPal, and uh, I will ding you right back with a return email that asks for your mailing address, and uh, then out she goes. I get your mailing address, I pop one in a box, and off she goes to you. So 20 bucks for a hat. Every dollar, every dollar from the hats, goes right into building the glider. So uh, not only do you have a cool hat to wear, but you're helping fund the construction of the glider which is greatly appreciated. And in case you uh, noticed, uh, the banner on my homepage for my channel has a picture of the X-Plane Simulator for my wing, which is way cool and tons of fun to fly. Uh, for those of you out there who like to fly X-Plane or would even like to fly my wing before it's finished, the simulator is excellent. It flies a lot like the models, 
and you can uh, get a taste of what it's like to fly this thing before it flies. I use it for practice. And uh, I'll be glad to send you all the files that you need to plop into your copy of X-Plane to fly my wing for a mere $15. And once again, you send that 15 bucks to PayPal, rawclang, gmail.com, and uh, you'll get it by return email. You'll get a zip folder that has all the files in it, and a few little instructions. Actually, you go online, I'll link you to a video that has instructions on how you load it up. And we have lots of upgrades coming. You spend the 15 bucks for that baby, and that signs you up for life to all the upgrades that are coming. Uh, we got our fingers crossed here. The guy who built that simulator is working on a foot launch version. It's going to be so cool. You'll be able to go to any uh, hang gliding site that you know of and set up there and actually foot launch off uh, a hang gliding site. And currently you cannot do that in X-Plane with anything. Uh, and I don't think there's a uh, at-home simulator where you can actually foot launch uh, hang gliders and uh, ultralight aircraft. Uh, and we're actually working on building that in uh, so you can go to any of those sites and literally stand up and run down the hill uh, and launch your glider. And then when you retract the landing gear, when you hit G to retract the landing gear, the legs come up. It's pretty cool. Uh, so you'll get all those upgrades that come along, uh, and for 15 bucks, you have a blast and, and have a chance to say, hey, I flew Rawls wing before it was done. Uh, and what's cooler than that? So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy all these videos. Come on back. Uh, maybe in a few days here, I'll have that video on why I'm pushing so hard on weight on this thing. A very interesting spreadsheet uh, that shows various aircraft like this, and the numbers are fascinating. So uh, subscribe so, and click the notify button there, the little bell, uh, so you get notification when that video comes out.